This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. If you know me, I'm a huge Lions fan, one of the biggest supporters. And not just when it comes to Lions. In life, I'm definitely I'm definitely a half glass or glass half, excuse me, full type of guy. You know, I try to think positively. I try to think about things with balance, meaning, you know, sometimes it isn't as bad as you think. Sometimes it isn't as good as you think either, but I feel like that's okay. But I have a hard time, and, and I'm struggling with finding the positives, looking beyond the glaring obvious uh, when it comes to Detroit Lions. So today's show, I'm going to try to take out at least for a segment or two all emotion. I'm going to try to look at this team as if I was not a fan of the Lions. I'm going to try to look at this team as if I'm just a fan of the NFL when I do that. Uh, I tweeted about this saying just looking at this team from a, a, a non-emotional standpoint, it, it's, it's quite bleak. Mallory here for the Hindsight 20 Podcast. What's going on, guys? Proud member of PrivateTroit.com. Proud member of the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. So let's talk about it. Uh, I've been away for a little bit. Uh, Lions went on a three-game winning streak. That was cool. And then uh, the most important game of the year, you know, um, and there will certainly, you know, as this season progresses, you know, there'll be, there'll be more important games probably, you know, uh, as they're fighting for, you know, their playoff lives, the division doesn't look likely, but you never know. At this point, though, it's about as important of a game as you can get uh, for your 11th game of the year versus the Minnesota Vikings and falling short. You know, when they went th- through that three-game win streak, and I'm not going to rehash those games. They won them. You know, it was Green Bay, Monday night on the road, Cleveland at home, Chicago on the road. There were a lot of naysayers. There were a lot of negativity. And you heard it. You heard the spiel. All right, they they beat Green Bay, but it's without Aaron Rodgers. So, you know, Brett Hundley, and he looked bad. The Browns game, people talked about it like it was a loss because you're down 10 points against the Browns, and, you know, the game was tied late, you know, uh, yada, yada, yada. This is the worst team in the NFL, and, you know, you had no business being down ever or being close or if it wasn't for the bad, you know, decisions, uh, Deshaun Kaiser getting hurt or the, the boneheaded play at the uh, end of the half. Et cetera, et cetera. Then the Bears game, kind of the same thing. You were down, you know, you're down big and Trubisky, you know, drove down the field on you at the end. You know, we had to get a, a miraculous type of kick, but it's not even really a miraculous kick anymore. Matt Prater doing what he does, you know, in windy conditions, you have to rely on that along with, uh, Connor Barth uh, missing horribly. And so it was three wins, but you would have thought it was three losses. And I was of the opinion, like, no. It's the NFL. A win is a win is a win, especially, you know, two road divisional games. I don't care who you're facing. I don't care who the quarterback is. I'm not making apologies for losses or rather for wins. And I still don't. All right. They won those three games, you know, after dropping to three and four and it was big. It was good for them. Unfortunately, though, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the naysayers, a lot of the negativity to me, started to hold weight when you finally get on this roll and now you're at home you got a chance to you know just stay in that division race win the tiebreaker and they play the way they did against the minnesota vikings you know it kind of gave weight to people saying yeah they beat these bad teams but yada 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 whereas i was defending it saying hey a win is a win they're rolling the offense looks good you go out and you just look pathetic and i'm sick of it I'm sick of the slow starts. I'm sick of, you know, better pass rush, not enough. I'm sick of not being able to run the ball. I'm sick of it all. You know, and I'm getting to the point where it's not a breaking point. All right. They can very well win 10, 11 games. Heck, they go six and 10. It's not a breaking point because I love this team. If you listen to this show, you probably love them too. But to say I'm getting fed up is an understatement. You know, just one year. I'm sitting here yesterday and I'm watching the Eagles game. And every team has an Eagles type run at some point. And since I've been watching the NFL, I've been watching the NFL for 25 years and every single team with like the exception of, you know, the Browns. And, you know, if you're in the AFC East, sorry, Tom Brady has not uh, yielded you any type of, you know, run division, not too much excitement aside from that. Every team has had that type of year. It's almost like 
if you're just around long enough, you're going to luck or just find your way. I don't believe in luck, but you're just going to find your way into a successful season, a run. And I'm not talking about, you know, the Eagles could very well go to the Super Bowl. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about a division, something as simple as winning, I don't know, 12 games, something as simple as, I don't know, a home playoff game. It's frustrating. Every single team has had it besides the Browns since I have been watching the NFL. For some, you got to go back a little bit further. All right. You look at Jacksonville. I lived through it, though. I'm not an old guy. I'm 32. All right. Early in their tenure going to the AFC championship. I mean, we're striving for things that have happened so many times with so many other teams. Yet and still, it has escaped us. 2013 is happening all over again, where everything is just laid out in front of you to win this division. And what does this team do? They do what they do best, and they squander their opportunity. When you've got, you know, Case Keenum, who looks like he should be a member of the Foo Fighters instead of a quarterback, you know, he's sitting there on Thanksgiving. And they don't have the turkey leg, and they don't have the 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 ugly metal looking turkey. But he's got the he's got the award. He's got the team that's nine and two. And yeah. Sounds like I'm crying and complaining. So what? I am. Don't like it? You know what to do. I don't care. I am crying and complaining because it's sad. You know, our high water marks are wild card births, which is something that we still might get this year. That's our high water mark. Wild card births followed by humiliation in a wild card round. It's frustrating. Like I said, it just feels like 2013. It just feels like it's it's there again. Everything laid out for you. No Aaron Rodgers, rookie quarterback uh, in Chicago, third stringer, second, however you want to crown a uh, case Keenum. And I know it, it, and it, and it proved if this really proves it, that it NFL is so much more than your quarterback. So I, I feel bad doing this story because Matthew Stafford is light years ahead of anybody in this division currently playing. Say what you want. You know, with all the negativity in the world, we have a great quarterback. We do. It's a reason, and it's it's not coincidence that some of the uh, the former quarterbacks, whether it's a Troy Aikman, said a Thursday he's he's top five, if not top three, in the league. Is a reason why football players and different things. You know, you can look at Pro Football Focus and you look at all these little stats and da 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 da. And speaking of stats, he's like top six or seven in those as well in almost every important category. But it's a reason why quarterbacks and former GMs and different players. It's not just lip service when they talk about how good Matthew Stafford is. He is that good. No one has done more with less. No one has had less of a supporting cast, less of a, I mean, I'm just regurgitating things you guys already know. I get it. So if there is a bright spot, it's still Matthew Stafford. The next time I hear someone talk about this man's money, I'm going to ring the necks. It's easy to say it's, it's, it, it, it's just lame. All right. He's the highest paid quarterback. Next year, the next top 10-ish quarterback will be the highest paid. That's the way it goes, all right? Not to mention, you complain about the money, you complain about the money, you complain about the money, but the Lions are in a very good position cap-wise. It's not like this guy's got all this money and now they can't re-sign this or that guy. They can't attract free agents via, you know, giving them a nice contract. Lions are slated to have the seventh most uh cap space in the league. And I don't even think that includes, you know, the eventual cutting of Eric Ebron. They picked up his option. So I think when uh when they tabulate, you know, cap space, these different sites, they're factoring in Ebron's eight million, which by cutting him goes completely off the books. So just 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 kill it with the Stafford and how much he makes and this and that. Now he he wasn't sharp on Thursday. But guess what? It happens, you know it's not the first or last time, you know, you, you would love him to be on the money all the time, but he isn't. Most quarterbacks aren't. He's still, in my opinion, a top five quarterback in this league. Not the problem. We know the problems, you know, and unfortunately, you know, it, it's, it's getting to the point where it's young and I like what Bob Quinn has done. And I believe in Bob Quinn. I think, you know, I think he ultimately are going to put the pieces here to get us a winner. I like the areas he's addressed, but we, we have to call out. The fact that our two glaring weaknesses are still there. Now, you know, some would argue that linebacker was like the worst unit last year. And you you could argue that. But the fact that you let defensive end after defensive end after defensive end pass last two drafts. 
and you let running back after running back pass the last two drafts. And lo and behold, those are probably our two biggest issues you have to talk about. Now, it's not all Amir Abdullah, although he is holding some of the blame. He deserves some of the blame. You know, anytime Theo Reddick is a superior runner to you, you have a problem. That's not what he's here for. And granted, a lot of times when Abdullah gets that ball, there's a defender or two there. But you got to figure this thing out. I don't think there's going to be a lot of upheaval on the offensive line. Now, you've got the guard, left guard, and center situation. You know, will Swanson be re-signed? Uh, yes or no? Who knows? I can see Glasgow moving to center, and they're figuring out their left guard. Or they may bring him back. There's a little flux, potentially. One to two positions, one and a half positions. But three guys are there. They're going to be there. TJ Lang, Rick Wagner, Taylor Decker, and I think Graham Glasgow in some form, whether it's left guard or center, your, your offensive line is kind of going to be what it is. You hope that maybe the scheme changes and they gel a little bit and there's a little bit of health and Taylor Decker keeps maturing. Glasgow's young as well. You know, you hope those things happen. Then the offensive line does get better. But again, the offensive line is kind of going to be what it is. There can be improvements, but it won't be via personnel. There is an opportunity though for improvements via personnel in the backfield. And so it has to be addressed. You know, you have to look at drafting a guy, and I know best player available. And, you know, when you got a team that has so many needs, you can kind of just peg off a position, peg off a position. There's a few that you don't need. You don't need a quarterback. You don't need this, and you just get the best guy. But it gets to a point where it's like, we have to get something going on this running game. Look at what we struggle with and adjust. Look at for, you know, guys that hit the hole, look for north and south guys, look for guys that make people miss in the backfield, look for guys that have a little bit more patience. Whatever has to be done, the personnel in the backfield has to change, just like we need to see actual personnel changes in the front four, specifically the defensive end. So I'm not killing uh, Glo- uh Glover Quinn, not definitely not killing him. I'm not c- killing Bob Quinn, all right? But, you know... We've seen the offensive line addressed, addressed, addressed. We've seen a lot of acquisitions in the secondary and even in linebacker. You know, it's time, even with receiver, bringing in Galladay and bringing in Marvin Jones and Quan Bowden last year. It's time to really look at defensive line, specifically end. And you, you got, listen, it's time. The running back situation has to, we have to have new guys back there. Free agency, draft, trades, the Amir Abdullah thing isn't working. And it sucks because, you know, I've, I've been defending this guy time and time and time. I don't know. Liz Frank, injury, I don't know what to say, man. All I do know is that they have to make some changes. Um, we need a lead back. We don't have one. I thought Abdullah could be that guy, and uh, I was wrong. And, uh, you know, Bob Quinn and company have to look in the mirror and say it's time to make some changes. All right, guys, we'll take a quick break. We're going to stop talking about football for a brief second. We'll talk about some Black Friday. Won't do too much of a preview against the Ravens. We know who the Ravens are. You know, they are who we thought they are, to quote Dennis Green. You know, we'll lay out, though, what happens if we win this game versus what happens if we lose. And, uh, you know, talk about the scope of this team. I'll try to be a little bit more positive, but I can't give you any guarantees. Stay right here as we'll return for the second half, whether it be positive, negative, sad, Jerry, crying, Jerry, enthused. You know, my glass could get half full uh, as we listen to a little bit of musical interlude. Who knows? Just stay tuned and uh, we'll definitely break up the monotony, like I said, with a little Black Friday talk. So we're coming right back. Don't go anywhere for half number two of the Hindsight 20. All right, we're back on the hindsight 20. Let's talk about Black Friday for a second. Are you are you big into the Black Friday? Some will say, well, you don't really save that much money and this and that. I'm down with it. I know my buddy Ryan Matthews, um, Pride of Detroit. Uh, he's into it. And, you know, I, I, I buy into it. And I have for quite some time. Now, uh, this year's haul was a little bit different. And actually, I actually went this route uh, last time I bought a TV, which was like, uh, I don't know, seven years ago, where 
you know, I love Micro Center, man. And oftentimes, like the week or two before Black Friday, they don't really advertise it, but they start dropping the prices of their TVs. And I'm just not, you know, if I can, I'm, I'm not into the waiting in line for, you know, 12 hours and camping out to get TVs. I think that's not as common as it was now because the prices are just dropping, dropping. You can get so many different options. And two, uh, a lot of the TVs that people are camping out for are very, very cheap. And they're not always the best models. They're the doorbusters. Uh, and I can go on and on. I, I'm into the whole audio video thing. I used to be, I guess, a video file, if you will. A lot of those doorbuster models, they aren't even uh actual models. You, like you, you can't even get that TV anytime but Black Friday. They use inferior parts, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, Micro Center usually have good deals on TVs around Black Friday. And that's the route I went. And it made a nice upgrade. Went from a 50-inch. 1080p to a 65 inch 4k and uh, i'll tell you this vizio it's not a name many people re- uh, equate to you know superior in terms of television you think of samsung you think of sony and some people think of lg but upon doing my research in terms of 4k the top dogs are yes samsung sony and then vizio and in fact buddy of mine that works for samsung uh, a lot of the Vizio and Samsung models are identical with, with the guts, what's inside the parts. So if you get the right model, uh, you save some money and you get a superior uh, quality. And that's what I did. Got a, a big TV. I love it. Having a little issues with direct TV. And in fact, the, the 1080 and 720 I'm watching on direct TV, I'm underwhelmed. I think I have to get an upgraded 4K receiver. I've done a lot of research. I've changed the settings and I'm not pleased with the, the regular HD output, right? You know, 720, 1080 through direct TV on the 4K TV. I know I'm probably getting geeky and nerdy. All these terms. Some of you don't care about. You're here to listen to the Lions. Bear with me. So I'm going to try to get that 4K receiver. We'll see what happens. But the actual 4K content I've seen, whether it's on Netflix, man, I watched Stranger Things and it blew me away. I'm loving it. So I'm hoping to figure that out. Maybe once I get that 4K receiver, my direct TV. You know, looks better right now. I'm not pleased with that picture, but the actual 4K and the video games are looking good. Speaking of video games, I bought a couple, picked up NBA 2K uh, for like half the price, which is cool. And then I got Injustice 2, which is a story game, but also a fighting game from DC. Please help me. If anyone out there is a gamer, I suck with a capital S at fighting games. Didn't play them much as a kid. I've always been by the basketball game every year, by the football game every year, and you know, here or there, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll buy a game, but other than those, but I'm just, I'm really into those too. As a result, I suck at everything else. First person shooters and, uh, you know, hockey, baseball and fighting games. So I bought this Injustice 2, brought it over to my brother-in-law's house and just got embarrassed. You know, everyone getting a turn playing and I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm losing. But being the competitive guy that I am, I think I'll go to the lab and uh, please, by all means, if you got some tips, how can I stop sucking at fighting games? By all means, leave it on my Twitter at Jerry Mallory NFL. I don't want to get embarrassed. I don't want to go 0 for whatever I went, probably 0 for 10, uh, like I did yesterday in front of my family. I like winning. So we'll see how that goes. But that was, that was my Black Friday. I, I went a little bit early, got the TV a week beforehand. I picked up a couple of video games, two games for like 40 bucks brand new on the Xbox One. Can't beat it. I think next. I'll be eyeing a PlayStation Pro to utilize the power and the 4K experience, yada, yada, yada. Back to the Lions. So, you know, you got Baltimore coming up. Do I think we'll win? I'm going to say no. At this point, you know, based on this team, just, you know, they're very consistent. Against lower than average teams, they win. You know, if this was at Fort Field, I think, you know, Minnesota, or excuse me, Baltimore is like about an average, slightly above average, maybe. I don't know. They're in that average of slightly above average range. This is that forward field. I think we win it. The fact that it's not, I'm picking the Ravens to win. But let's look at the two scenarios because this is, you know, no doubt the hardest game we have left on this, on the schedule. You've got Buccaneers were just so disappointing. So, so much hype and promise with uh, Jameis Winston this year and, you know, Mike Evans and just not getting it done. Just not getting it done. They look bad. You know, I, they're probably mailing it in. You know, a few weeks from now, I can see them being completely out of the question. So I don't think, you know, that's a game we have to worry about too much, although it is on the road. Uh, the Bears at home, we should win that one. Buck, uh, Packers at home, we should win that one. You know, Cincinnati's another one. It's not a gimme. 
They got some players. They still have a solid, you know, guys on defense. Uh, but I think we'll have a chance at that one. This is a game that will decide, I think, whether we contend for a wild card spot or not. It's simple. If we win this game, I have confidence that yes, you know, if we can beat Baltimore on the road, then yeah, we can beat Cincinnati and the rest of the games. And so even if we slip up at one spot, you know, not win five in a row, if we beat Baltimore, I can definitely see us winning 10 or even 11 games. If we lose to Baltimore, you know, I'm, I'm looking at nine wins and with all the tiebreakers, I just don't see how we get in. So, uh, there you have it. I'm just, I'm fed up, man. I really am. And I, I'm trying to find, you know, positivity. This team to me is just predictable and this team is, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking at this team, if this was not a Detroit team, this was say, I don't know, Houston Texans, this team just doesn't have anything that scares me. You know, Stafford, hey, premier guy, Marvin Jones coming on, you know, those things you have to worry about, but I don't respect the run game. I don't respect the defense. This is, this just isn't a team that I respect. This isn't a team that I would fear. You know, you got some, some teams with even worse records, but they do certain things that you got to worry about. They have certain aspects and elements to the game where you have to account for. They've got a front four that scares you. You got a running attack. You know, it's just not here for Detroit. And unfortunately, this year, no matter how it pans out or ends up going, if we sneak into the playoffs or not, this is the 2016 team. Good against, you know, teams are supposed to beat. You know, you get a win or two against good teams, but not enough. And if they make the playoffs, it's going to be a quick escape. That's just my opinion. I was talking to Jeremy Reisman. We were chatting back and forth. He's like, you know, what makes you think that they just won't win? And, you know, if, if they make it to the playoffs, honestly, it depends on the team. You know, if we face Minnesota again, possibly, you know, we match up well against them. But who, who else really of these playoff contenders do you see yourself going on the road and beating? I mean, Minnesota's one, and that's really about it. Go to Seattle. I think the same thing happened last year happens again. Um, the Rams, for some reason, I just don't trust them. Yeah, I could see us maybe going there and upsetting the Rams. It's just something about that team. But by and large, you know, if you sneak and get a win in the playoffs, which would be great, we could use it. This team ain't going nowhere this year. You know, unfortunately, the three and one start, it, it you know, it, it got us excited, you know, and the turnovers, was it a real thing? What it, would it keep going and it stopped and this team's success has ultimately stopped. I'm going to be more positive next show, guys. I know. I'm sorry. You know, it's bad when you listen to 97.1 and you start to kind of agree with the sentiments of Mike Valenti. And it's like, you know, he's like, I hate this team. I can't hate this team. I never will. I love the Lions so much, you know, uh, but I get what he's saying. I get it. I do hate certain things about this team. And, you know, this whole nine, 10 wins and end up, you know, not being able to pick a superstar, but not good enough. That little middle, that middle ground we've been in now for several years. It is frustrating. I'm done crying. I'm done complaining. I thank you all for listening. You get a more constructive and more positive and perhaps more upbeat Jerry Malley on the next show. Of course, PrideBetrayed.com. I haven't done anything with them in a while content wise, but Hey, look to the skies. I might be doing something soon. Hit me up on Twitter at Jerry Mallory NFL. And until next time, we have a more upbeat, positive glass half full, Jerry. This has been Jerry Mallory for the Hindsight 20 podcast. Thanks for listening.